Let me tell you something, brother. Dude. Now, if that dude. don't get you. If that don't get you pumped up, by God, I don't I don't know what would. Woo. I'm wanting to walk in the street with a bunch of kids running toward me. <laughs> I'm ready to no sell everything. Let's go. <laughs> Heck yeah. Love yeah. It. So uh welcome everybody to our stream regarding the issues i don't know alleged we're going to be using that a lot alleged <laughs> and allegedly Legend. issues uh what is up with severin films so i mean there's a whole backstory to this and i'm sure that we want to get into the whole backstory before we talk about what actually happened because this story goes on for like actually years if you really think about it so, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to talk about that tonight. We've got some people in here. Grande's Graveyard. What's going on, man? We'll be talking about um, the stuff that they announced today, too. Severin did make some announcements on uh, a gigantic box set, which I was just... It was making me tired looking at everything that was in the damn set. I think there's like 13, 14 discs in it or something like that. 13, I'm confused by that, by that set. I don't know about you all. I'm like, where in the hell did that come yeah, from? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, I think it's like folk themed horror movies. And most of it is, and we'll talk about it. I mean, most of it's foreign films and stuff. So, uh, but Grande's Graveyard in the House. Anthony. Southern. What's going on, dude? Anthony. Stuntman Mark. Man. What's up? And Stunt Mr. Mark. Magic Spells. So push it to the limit would be a good, uh, yeah, that'd be a good song as well to use. <laughs> um, yeah, I gotta say, Brandon's mentioned it. That's the WCW Hogan song, and it's grown on I me quite a bit. I love that one, man. Oh, I love the WCW one. Yeah, that's the one I could get away with playing without being flagged, so that's why I played it. But that it is a good. <laughs> it's funny because that one's one. clearly like a rip off of the uh, WWF one, oh, but yeah. like they just amped oh, yeah. it up on steroids. <laughs> it's somehow or another yeah. like. Yeah, it makes it great. Yeah, and the solo's it. a lot better in it, too, towards the end. It, the solo's freaking rocking. And... Yeah, it's definitely underrated, I think. And, like, isn't it, like, very much like Man Called Sting? Like, I mean, the whole, like, kind of... I think it's the same, <laughs> like the, the same guy, the, the same band. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, Voodoo Child for Hogan is good, too. And it's cool that uh, we were talking about AEW earlier uh, this week, or, well, last week. They're licensing out real music and stuff, and I like that. I think it's pretty neat. Yeah, uh, I like that, too. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think Paul White needs a new theme song. We were talking about that. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's basically into the same guy that did the the big show. I think it yeah. is, yeah. It's the well. Let me sing about Big Show. Oh, I can't call him that. Paul White. <laughs> and what was, uh, you know what's funny about that? They had like the little Tron thing. Why did it kept saying like G? Was that like for Giant or am I missing something? Did you I notice think, that? It kept saying yeah, like I'm, no BS, G. And then it was like a letter G. And I was like, what, is, what does that mean? I believe so. That's the only thing I can think of. I've listened to that song I don't know how many damn times just because it's so funny. <laughs> They're going to call him Giant Paul. <laughs> He's so cute. <kidding. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Anthony Munn, what's up, man? So, again, oh, man. The, the show tonight is primarily about the Severin Films incident, which I think all this was going down, what was it, Friday night? Is it, yeah. I think it was when we were doing the AEW thing. We first got um, word about this. It may have been a little bit before. I'm not really sure. Are we talking about the initial with like the drop dead Fred? The initial news? One, yeah. that was that was uh, oh, man. Um, it was early last week. I think. Oh yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was the day of AEW. It was that day. So that was Saturday. No, Friday. Friday night. Friday. We got the news on Friday. Mm -hmm. And. Um, I know we were talking then. I was like, how does something like that happen? But once we get into it, it all makes perfect sense. 
And if you want any clues, because we're going to, you know, talk about it here in a minute, just look at our look at her shirt. <laughs> it's a little bit of an idea of what exactly <laughs> happened. So I guess like the very first thing like you were talking about that anybody noticed or that anybody became aware of was that and to be honest with you, Drop Dead Fred is not a film that like I was gonna buy. Like I know there's a lot of people that wanted that to come out and there's a lot of people that would have bought it, but I it's just not something that's like I've seen it. It's right up there with like little monsters to me somehow or another. Like it's the same type of film for me. But all of a sudden, like the shit just disappeared and everybody was kind of like this is odd it's curious yeah this was one of their was it september titles and it was in a bundle and yeah it was and um so i pre-ordered it um believe it or not boom so uh i'm a huge phoebe cates fan i'll tell you that so phoebe cates to me is is was a crush of mine like through my childhood and stuff so a uh, big fan of hers so i'm gonna kind of get everything that you know she was in um i like drop dead fred i don't love drop dead fred i like it but i think to be honest what drew me towards it was that severn was doing it like that to me made it even more special than if any other company big wig company put it out so like let's say like i don't know columbia pictures put it out or a, a non-boutique label. I think that's what drew me in because I think it's just super cool that they're doing this. Like, for instance, we, I have this right here. I just got in Overboard. Now, I didn't own this on any format, surprisingly, but I've seen it about a 100 times. And the main reason I bought it was because I'm like, why is Severn releasing Overboard? It just doesn't seem like something that would be in their catalog. Same thing with Drop Dead Fred, but I like that. I like the idea of them kind of going outside the box and it actually drew me in even more to start picking up those titles that you figure would be distributed on a big label and it's in more of a boutique setting so to me i was all in on drop dead fred so it it it's still a bummer to me uh about the whole situation yeah they've come up with some ones that like like you were saying like uh overboard drop dead fred like there have been some that you just completely come out of left field because mostly for the people that don't know, Severn mostly does like right. low budget, you know, horror films or exploitation films or like apocalypse films or things like that. But then every now and then, just seemingly out of nowhere, they'll have like a, a comedy or some big budget, you know, comedy right. or drama or something from a bigger studio that they'll throw in there, which always seemed just odd because you don't really see anybody else doing that like you don't see vinegar syndrome fucking thrown in overboard or anything like that right Severn, like it almost just, yeah it seemed like something like drop dead fred and overboard was like out of their reach like i like it just was so weird that i'm like how did they get this and you know how great would it have been on the shelf where you've got overboard drop dead fred peanut butter solution and sinful dwarf in the same you know pile you know what i mean so it's <laughs> yeah. like one of those things where, where it's just so random that it like it drew me in even more for it so when we got the news about drop dead fred i was super bummed and honestly like if it does get released by a bigger studio like it's supposed to i'm less intrigued to buy it at that point which you know and, and you know like there those discs have to be done so they're somewhere they're they've got to be finished ready to go and I, I would like even if even if they sent like even if they they're going to go in the they're watching incinerator this now, now. right? If they, <laughs> if they, yeah, even if they just want to send me the damn case with the with the the the, uh, the artwork, just send it to me. I'm not going to say anything. I I just love the idea of like how it looked and with the black and it was just it was awesome, man. Like so, you know, it sucks that I'm you're never going to get that now. Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that. Like I like. Universal or MGM or somebody like that putting out a film, you know they're not going to do shit with it. Like, they might have one little special feature on it, and they're not going to put any kind of packaging into it or anything. They're just going to release it like bare bones. But these companies, like Severin and Vinegar Syndrome and, and Synapse, they always put, like, killer package and artwork, mm -hmm. and the PR is always oh, great. Yeah. The special features are always great. Like, you just don't get that from these bigger companies, which is a shame. But yeah, 
Yeah, I, and I agree. And I think that's kind of where I, the uniqueness of Severin, because all these, these boutique labels are starting to feel very similar, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But when they do these things and they, they kind of make their stuff a little unique in a way, when you can get these titles that, you know, you know, all these other labels are not going to put out. It, it just made it a little bit more special for, for Severin, I think. We got uh, something interesting on here that we haven't talked about. Um, Lope Key Vision Films. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but that's okay because I'm from Eastern Kentucky. Well, it's uh, it Lepke, says, but yeah. Lepke. There you go. He must be a, yeah. uh, that must be a Northern name. Bunch of no, Northerners. It's not. It's on my, he, <laughs> he, checked out my, he checked out my stream and, and told me the pronunciation because I kept getting it wrong. So. Lepke Vision Films. What's up, guys? I was on the fence about getting Drop Dead Fred because I'd never seen it before. And I've always wanted to, so I picked it up with the special. or So it's packed with special features, and I ordered it. So the um, interesting thing is they said that they're going to refund everyone. I wonder how long that's going to take. Have you been refunded yet, Garrett, that you know of? Uh, I don't know. I don't know for sure if I have yet or not. I could have been. So I'll, I'll go ahead and read this cause this is on their, um, on their website and everywhere else. So like the announcement that they made, uh, was as follows. Like we are gutted to report that we can no longer produce with our release of, we can no longer proceed with our release of drop dead Fred due to a legal issue. We can confirm that it will be announced through another label soon. We'll begin issuing full refunds for web store orders in the near future, but please keep in mind that it will take several days to refund everyone. Those that ordered the September bundle will be refunded $25. So, like, right after it got taken off and they released that statement, and then everybody kind of was like, fuck. That's kind of the, we were up to speed. Yeah. Like, what the right. fuck? Um, yeah. So we're going to go back a few years, actually. I've got this saved on my phone here, my high tech redneck. <clears throat> this is in 2014. There's a little company named Scream Factory that was going to release Cruel Jaws. And according to Scream Factory back, this is like December of 2014. Um, Cruel Jaws took several scenes from the Jaws trilogy and other Italian shark movies. In Italy, the makers <laughs> seemingly didn't encounter legal difficulties in doing so, but the folks in the U.S. Sure, surely aren't so relaxed on these matters. Um, for a minute, the distributor thought about removing the risky material and releasing it with what was left. But the film was ultimately decided against because uh, that wouldn't serve the fans. So they, I think it was Eliminators of the Year 3000 and Cruel Jaws double feature that was announced from Scream Factory. And then, you know, I guess uh, canceled. So what does this have in, I mean, these are two different movies. What the fuck? Right. <laughs> How are these two things alike? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Coincidentally, the Cruel Jaws uh, release, which we've got it. Look, I even got the damn novelization here. Look. Look you at can that. Sell, look you at can that sell shit out there. I'll make some money. <laughs> right. And right here. Okay. This is another thing that we'll talk about. See, that should have been your, your first thing. Fucking hint that something might be wrong. I don't know. <laughs> it, was, oh, it was one of those things where I was like, in my head, I was like, "Wow, look at how badass this is!" <laughs> it, it is, like, yeah. you know. And uh, <laughs> so I was, um, you know, that was that was me. I was all excited for it. And um, so this was last last year, right? Wasn't this last May or June? Yeah, it was, like that it wasn't too. It wasn't too long ago. No. But it had been out a while, and they have been selling it a while, right? And I remember seeing it, I was like, what in the fuck, man? But evidently, they had, um, Severn Films had done this before with limited, unpromotable slipcovers, which they would 
kind of promote it, but it would be like pixelated out. It'd be blurred. I was, which that's is the another, weird, which is another red flag. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, it's like, I, I remember on the website when they dropped Beyond Darkness, and I was looking at it, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Because, like, they had the movie up, and they had Evil Dead 5, but the 5 was, like, blurred out. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, the, the title was yeah, blurred to the point where you couldn't see it. So I was kind of just, like, confused as to what the hell was going on. And look, I don't know what, the, like, they might have got a permission slip from their grandma to do it. I don't fucking know, and I don't care. Like, however it is that they wanted to do it is fine with me. I'm just saying, it's it was just odd. Like, to see, like, why would you have something on a website blurred out? You know, just odd. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm glad I have it. I'm, I think it's it's cool, and, you know, it might be the last time they ever do something like this, but... I'm willing um, to bet it is. And, but by uh, the way... They had another one. That, <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, by the way, uh, Cruel Jaws is fucking amazing. Like, if you don't have Cruel Jaws, like, I just... Too bad, too late. Yeah. yeah you, you're you're going to go on eBay. You're going to go on eBay and pay like $80 to $150 for it right now. I'll tell you that. But it is it is an amazingly bad I'm film. Sure, I'm sure now since, you know, the source material's out there, you'll probably get bootlegs again. Um, some Blu-ray. Now... I don't think Cruel Jaws was released. Was it on anything in the U.S.? It may have been on a DVD from like some sort of shady I, studio back in the day. I don't think so. I remember seeing Cruel Jaws like on a torrent, actually, like way back in the day. Um, that's the only time I've seen it. Okay. So evidently, yeah, I don't know if Severin was like, hey, well, fuck, who's going to care, right? I mean, they use scenes from Jaws, uh, the shark scenes, because Vincent Dawn, a.k.a. Bruno Mattei, um, they didn't really have a shark to use during the making of Cruel Jaws, so he kind of just edited around scenes from other movies with shark. With the worst looking, like, with <laughs> the actual shark... And I'm not even sure if that, if that was his shark or a shark from another Italian movie that I don't know about. But whatever the shark was, the practical effect shark was they were using in that movie, was mm. fucking hilarious looking. Like it looked like something you would ride in front of a grocery store or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if you fucking had a shark that you could ride like one of those little 25 cent rides in front of a grocery store. That's what it would look like. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's a great addition. Um... This was a must buy when they announced this just because I knew like, I'm like, they're getting a little bit ballsy with the, at least the, this slip cover right here. I was like, how? Cause Jaws is a huge franchise. I mean, that is still a big money making franchise for universal. They had the Jaws ride for many, many years. So anything that has a fucking amusement park ride. Okay. This is an important, well, let me get it right here. This is an important franchise <laughs> for Universal Pictures. I like how it's just, you, t you put the actual one up, it's exactly the fucking same. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing, like, I mean, I mean there's yeah, no question. Don't worry about it. The font, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, eh, fuck it. We'll go, <laughs> we'll just put it out there. Yeah, they... They were selling it for over a year, I know. I think it was like May or June of last year, Cruel Jaws went on sale. Now, granted, they only did the pre-orders for the for the slip covers with the Jaws yeah. 5 name. But, you know, I was, I, I think I would, I had wondered it. I don't know if I'd mention it to you guys. How are they getting away with using actual footage shot? from the movie Jaws and I think it was Jaws 2 and three. I think you actually said that on the when we did the review like you were like I don't understand how that because there's actual like real footage from other movies in that movie and I don't you just really can't do that yeah I mean in other countries it may be possible to do and get away with because the the studio doesn't want to go through all the red tape of Filing lawsuits, cease and desist, whatever the hell they do. 
not to mention the fact that there's an imposter Hogan in it. Uh, yeah, that pissed, WWF ought to be suing them now. That pissed the Hulkster off too. You know, they got the his <laughs> he's miniature pissed, stand. He's, in. Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to press charges now. Look here, Sanford so, uh, Films, dude. <laughs> let me tell you something, Bruno, brother. <laughs> so, uh, Wes, did you just buy the the novel with the with the disc? Right, that's all you have because there was more goodies with a bundle because my uncle bought this bought this huge bundle where he got the novel he got like something you put on your toilet seat he got um where it makes it look like the shark's coming out but the best part of the one he bought was it came with a red bandana and in, and in the font of hulkamania it said cruel jaws they knew what they were doing they knew it and, uh, yeah. and and you can look on eBay right now. I guarantee someone's got it. It's a red and yellow bandana, and instead of Hulkamania, it says Cruel Jaws in the same font. Like, they uh-huh. they knew what they were doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's good marketing. Yeah. You know, oh, uh, God, I respect this. Severn Films, they know what they're yeah. doing when it comes to marketing shit now. They'll make little, little yeah, pins. I, I love and it. Little grizzly bears and bandanas and toilet seat covers and all kinds of shit. But, I mean, yeah. can you think... Honestly, not to talk any shit about them or anything, because I actually do think that they're one of the best companies out there. The the, the product that they put out, anyway, the, the stuff that I actually buy from them. But is there any other company that does shit like that that you can think of where they're just that, like, brazen? Yeah, where you can't check out without being bombarded with, like, hey, do you want a cool <laughs> jaw sticker? Do you want a peanut butter solution sticker? Like, I, I remember checking it. You want 40? Check it out for the first time on there. And you got to go through like 40 fucking stickers and like yeah. enamel pins and everything just to get to the bottom. They're like, we're going to get you. Yeah. You're going you to buy <laughs> some of this shit. Uh-huh. It's, like, it's like when you're sitting at a register in line and that's like where all the candy and shit is because they know like, mm. oh, if you're waiting in line, you're going to grab something on the way out, you know? It's kind of the same concept. Yeah, you ain't got no choice. You're going to accidentally click on nah. these fucking things trying to get to the bottom of this order. You gonna buy some shit? You didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's again, it's smart and and for me, like I don't know about you guys, but anything obscure, like I'm a very like, it, you know, what gets me all the time. I ain't putting that on the screen. I can't put that I, on no, the I'm screen, not, no, fat Rob no, Zombie. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, but yeah, like. I'm a sucker for mashups, right? Like, it could be posters, it could be whatever. Like, I love that kind of stuff where they mix and match, like, movies or different things. So, like, when I saw this and when I saw this, like, I was all over it because, to me, it's, like, it's just so unique. It, like, draws me in. So, uh, and I was super pissed that I never got that Terminator 2 one um, before. Yeah. So, I didn't realize how limited it was going to be. So, I was like, oh, I'm not going to miss out on these. That's whole- another one. Hey. Planet Mondo in here real quick. Though. We were talking about bundles earlier. Pla- uh, he says, Planet Mondo, I just saw the Hulkamania bundle on eBay for $150. What you gonna do? <laughs> Damn it. Cruel Jaws runs wild on you. Interesting thing, though. You were asking about this. They had a separate bundle for just the novelization and the, the movie. And mm-hmm. honest to God, I'm being 100% honest here. I just thought I was getting the movie. And I didn't realize that I ordered the bun- the bundle with the book because anybody knows me knows that I hate reading. And <laughs> <laughs> it's such an odd thing to say. I fucking hate to read. I don't have time to read. Okay, and like Jason nah, I feel the same way though. Yeah. yeah. So I bought this it's by tough. accident, and I've got two of them because I was okay. I I've said for years that I've been trained by Sylvia Brown, but something. Something in my head told me to buy more than one of these for some reason. And now I'm going to cash out. Let's play the Million Dollar Man's right. theme song now. I mean, strike when the iron is hot, man. If you're going to do it, you got to do it now. Because that it's in talks right now. In six months, people might forget about it. But now everybody's, you know, you see in the comments, people are like, oh, I wish I grabbed it. Like now people are, are amped up to try to get this so if i were you i would i would get rid of one now for sure yeah i mean i'd give it about another week or two and then people will be buying the shit out of them and stuff and i'd just go ahead and put it up there planet mondo interesting here he's a jim Cornette, and i think 
The Jim Cornette shirt, well, he mentions on here, legal issues aren't fun. I had to go to court with Jim Cornette over a t-shirt design. Now, is that the one that, um, what was it, like a uh, severed head or something like that, a Jim Cornette that somebody made? At a, do, do you I remember do remember about that, that, actually. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if that's yeah, the same yeah, shirt. Yeah, yeah. If so, I think he's selling it now, On his, well, whenever his website's up. But anyway. But going back to this, though, there was one other thing which I wish to God that I would have bought now because that would have been amazing. Uh, which was the uh, Shocking Dark, the Terminator yeah. 2 ripoff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. It's just allegedly yeah, they the did Terminator a 2 ways. ripoff. Yeah. And, like, the front of it is clearly Terminator 2, clearly Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Clearly the same image. And kind of the same thing as what they did with uh, Cruel Jaws. I mean, they used the same kind of like fonts and the, it, everything about it was basically the same. So, I mean, uh, it's a cool idea. I like the idea of it. Uh, I think it got them a lot of attention, both wanted and unwanted <laughs> at this point. So, I don't know. I've only got Cruel Jaws. Geek room. I don't have... Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't have that either. And, and the thing was is that I, I said this on my other stream the other day is that uh, I rarely will pay top dollar for any – if I miss a release, like more or less I'm not going to go after it for big money. Like that's why I'm, I'm a big ad for the kit for like if you want it, like get it early. You can at least try to sell it later if you don't like it. But Because I've learned my lesson so many times. But it was funny because – one of you guys sent me the link on eBay for that Terminator 2 one, and I was like, I was, like, tempted to buy it. I think it was, like, 80 bucks, and I was like, uh, but I didn't. But I was, like, I was, I was tempted because I don't own Shocking Dark at all, and uh, there was only, I think, one on eBay uh, with the slip. So I was considering it, but I didn't do it. But I may. I don't know. So We ain't getting any more, I don't think. Yeah, they no. did this with, I'm thinking, three different ones. They did the Cruel Jaws one. Uh, for Jaws 5 and Evil Dead 5, which you had there, Garrett, which is Beyond Darkness. Is that the name of it? Yeah. But what's Evil Dead 4? Is, is that the remake? What, like, what? That's some other... Uh, what is... Fucking... It's a good question. <laughs> and then the Terminator 2, when I, did they have any more besides those? I don't, I don't think so, but... A, so. a part of me feels like they did, but... I could be wrong, but I feel like I remember seeing like another mashup thing once and thinking to myself like, yeah, what is, what is this? Like confused with what it was, but I, I could be wrong on that. I might be thinking of like unmasked that vinegar syndrome did where I, it looked like Jason on the front. Like I could be thinking of that cause it kind of came around around the similar time. Um, but, um, somebody in the chat said they have like five cruel jaws sets. Yeah. So, Part of me is like, so. Now is when everybody's trying to sell them. So well, you, you know what? You haven't even you, got into the you you haven't got into the issue with them. Like we talked about Screen Factory, but like the the next step is that Cruel Jaws is gone. Yeah. Um. So yeah, first thing that was gone was Drop Dead Fred. It just vanished for a while. And then that statement, which Uncle Bill, I think you read a little bit earlier, was issued that due to legal issues, uh, they cannot go forward with Drop, Drop Dead Fred, which I'm guessing was was done. I mean, that thing was supposed to ship out, me. what, next? Very I think they, they ship stuff early, too, usually. So... I am willing to bet that they had to eat probably thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars Think about that. worth of product. Um, because this is, I mean, they're not going to be able to release it. The company that is releasing it, it's another boutique label from what I've been told. I did not get a confirmation on who. But if I was a betting man, I would say that Vinegar Syndrome is the one that's releasing it. I'd about guarantee it. You, you think so? Yeah, you think? Yeah. See, like a part of me thinks that like it's gonna be like off MBD or something like that, but um, it's possible. I'd be shocked, you know. All I've been told though is it's definitely a boutique label that's doing it. It's not a major label. Wow. 
which is in you know I'm I'm happy about that. Like I'd rather have it come from a, a boutique label because it makes it you know a lot more sought after in my opinion. Because again, it does seem like it would be something that would get a big release, like you know, at stores and stuff like that. So it just sucks, but it, it you know, hope it just gets good treatment. That's all. Yeah, for sure. And I, the thing that sucks for Severin is. All of that money lost, all of that time for the you know the extra material that they did, the restoration. Um, it's all for nothing. I mean, they the company that's releasing it, whoever they are, whether it be Vinegar Syndrome, MVD, Scream Factory, whoever, will they use that same material? Would would Severin sell it to them, or however that works? Um, but yeah, I mean, another, another loss like this one in Severin is out of business. I would, I mean, that, that's a major loss. I wouldn't have any idea on how much money they lost on this, but I mean, it could definitely bankrupt the company. Um, well, let me ask you this. So I, maybe if you mentioned it, but how does something like this happen? Like in a sense where you, you promote it, you do it, you finish it, it's ready to go. Someone slides in, busts your balls about something, says, oh, by the way, someone else has the rights to it. Like, how does this happen? You know what I mean? Like, that, that's where I'm confused. Like, how would someone like Vinegar Syndrome, like, I do know that them and Severn have, have partnered on things before. Like, you know, because if you look at the back of some of the boxes, it might say, like, you know, Vinegar Syndrome did the restoration, but they put it under. There's something going on with that. So I don't yeah. know, like. How does one like one big company like say it's Universal? Hey, you're, we're taking this back and we're going to give it to Vinegar. Like, how does that like what went wrong there? You know what well, I mean? Like, they, I know that like, Universal got it and like said, no, we're releasing it. It's our movie. But to have another small label do it, it's just weird. Like, what 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 T wasn't crossed somewhere? You know. Um, <laughs> I will get in trouble here. Allegedly. Oh fuck. Okay. If I was a preacher, you know that saying, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. You ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. I don't know if we want to get into it in details because it's still, from what I've been told, it's an ongoing issue. I don't know if it's a lawsuit, a cease and desist, whatever. But the connection is the studio, Universal Pictures, with the cruel jaws thing and the drop dead Fred thing. That's the connection. So evidently, I don't know exactly how this come about. Uh, a representative allegedly. I like that word. Allegedly. <laughs> a, uh -huh. Someone from universal pictures got wind of, I don't know if it was a slip cover that used the jaws style artwork first or if it was the footage that they found out about first and universal is not a studio to mess with that's what i've been told <clears throat> they go after you they're like sharks I would think. well they're like they're like cruel jaws themselves well this is what i was uh, what what garrett was saying those uh, what i'm curious about too though which is okay aside from all that shit like, how do you even get to a point, though, where you put that kind of stuff up without checking <laughs> any of that stuff? Like, in other words, how do you get to a point where you basically make yourself like a sitting duck for something like that to happen? That's the part I don't understand. I, th I think like, you need to ask Bill Olson about that because he's done that quite a bit from what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean question about it he's like fuck you like he doesn't get shit you know like, you i have permission like, for that shit <laughs> you know my uncle's done that a couple times he's reached out to him about something he's like fuck that like he doesn't he'll just blow you off like he doesn't care <laughs> you know but um but actually planet mondo has a pretty cool thing he said here if you want to put it up but um yeah like it, my biggest thing is i can understand if they if universal found it and they said hey this is ours like we're gonna release this you don't have the right to do it but to say, like, another boutique label is going to get it now, like, that's where I get where it's weird to me. Like, like what did Severin do that won't allow them to do it where someone else swooped in and was like, here, we'll take it. You know, I, that's where I'm confused. But he has a good point. Like, yeah. maybe this could have been the case. But 
who's to say, you know? He says, uh, Planet Mondo, maybe Universal got pissed at Cruel Jaws and stopped the release. Then Vinegar Syndrome jumped in to help Severin out by offering to release it to save them some money since they can reuse their content. That's Here, here's the possible. thought, too. Here's the thought. Maybe Drop Dead Fred was the first movie that Universal kind of like gave to them where they were really paying attention to what they were doing with it. So somebody goes on the site and they're fucking checking it out or whatever. And then they see all this other shit and they're like, oh, fuck. Like, this is not good. And yada, yada, yada. They notify them and then they just, yeah, get rid of get rid of Drop Dead Fred as well because they're pissed off about all the other stuff. That's definitely a possibility. I'm, it's a possibility. Who knows? They, they, look at, they look at like the production and all of a sudden they're like, hey, why are they going to release this Drop Dead Fred with a Beetlejuice 2 slipcover? <laughs> yeah. Why do they have, why does this company have fucking Forrest Gump 2 up on their website? <laughs> Who's to say? Yeah, but I just find it weird that another company would, like, if Vinegar Syndrome did help them out, like, you would feel that Vinegar Syndrome's like, hey, everything's already done, just release Drop Dead Fred, but, like, pay us back for helping you out, like, with that. Instead of taking it and then release, and then have to make a whole new cover, and, you know, who that, who knows, but it's just, it is odd if another boutique label gets this title. To me, it is, because it's not a boutique label type of title, and for them to be, like, kind of passing it around, like, fighting for it, is is very strange to me. Well, yeah, I know that that Brad Henderson guy does stuff for them, like for Severin all the time, and I know that they're real close, like the two companies are really close, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if they were just like, hey, you know, you take this, and then, you know, you like you said, you take a little bit of the profit of it, and then, you know, because we're giving it to right. you, you give us some of the profit. I mean, who the hell knows? But I could totally see something like that. Do you think we'll ever get Bill Olson back on the show, Uncle Bill? I sincerely doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, bunch known of, as the, he's known as the banana man now. He's not even known as Bill Olson. You bunch I of fucking it. mook bastards. You take the it's, shit off the show. It's take it off. The banana man. <laughs> so <You> take, another, <laughs> another so, thing though, the um, fuck? getting back to the cruel jaws. All right. So we showed you the limited slip cover, but even the regular cover. Okay. It still mimics the Jaws artwork, in a way, uh, the logo and all that stuff. So, possibly with the name alone, wouldn't you know? Wouldn't raise any red flags for Universal. But seeing it, how similar it looks to Jaws, and then just doing a Google search, they could find that hey, this company released it as a sequel to the Universal movies. And then, even further, they look into it and say, hey, there's actually footage from not only the first Jaws, but from the, the first three Jaws movies. I just think that there was something about, there was some connection between that Drop Dead Fred release and them finding out about Cruel Jaws. And I don't know, I really do think it was just they were paying more attention to the company. If I was guessing, because that's what kind of, I mean, if you look back, that's what happened to us, in a way. It was just like somebody... <laughs> <laughs> we just got too much press, too much publicity. Somebody was paying attention to it and, you know, found out. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened here, too. Well, a thousand meter films just made a good point. He says, I'm surprised Screen Factory or Shout Factory didn't get dropped at Fred since they already have a licensing deal with Universal. Hey, maybe that's the issue. Maybe they saw them releasing it and be like, hey, that was something we were promised or something. And then that kind of opened the floodgates. I mean, that could have easily and makes the most sense to me is that maybe they looked and been like, hey, that's supposed to be on our list of titles we, we are acquired or something. I mean, that kind of makes more sense to me. Um, but what's funny is that you kind of brought up the Cruel Jaws. And uh, I posted a picture of this the other day. And, and somebody commented and said, hey, why does yours have a blue K? Right? Not a black one. Like they all, all the Severins have black. Well, I purposely flipped cases because with the spine looking as jaws like as this, I just wanted it to look nice next to all the rest of my jaws Blu-rays. It just matched so perfect. It said that's jaws your one, OCD. two, three, four. Yeah. That's my OCD. But I'm <laughs> saying like, it's so perfect. Like if you line these up, like all next to each other, like the font is the same. The, it looks exactly the same in the spines. It just says, uh, just this movie. So I wanted it to kind of look nice, but yeah, it was my OCD. Has Joe, no, no, Joe Bob Tarhill, has Universal ever heard of parody 
yeah, the problem is it's not a parody. It's the actual footage. I mean, that's there, the big the big issue, I think. Yeah, there's there's all kinds of like precedent for this. I mean, even if you go back as far as like the uh, you know Anchor Bay getting in trouble for using like the Red Cross thing or something like that. But this right, that right, was right. kind of more of just like an accidental oversight to where I feel like using the exact same font and the exact same imagery and scenes from the movies and also multiple titles that are blurred out that have the actual names of the other movies in I feel like that maybe, possibly, this might have been intentional. <laughs> well, like they may have been think... pandering a bit to people who knew of these well, films. Alleged, right, maybe, possibly. Even the Screen Factory release when they showed their when they showed their case, it didn't have this font, right? It was a different font, I believe. Like. For Cruel Jaws, I'm, I believe it wasn't even like this Jaws type font logo. Like when Screen yeah. Factory was going to do it, I think it said it in a different way. So, I'm like you said, actually. when they came out with this and they purposefully made it look like that, and then not that. only, yeah, like oh, yeah. Not Jaws font, right? So, like they 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 purposely did it this way, and then said like, hey, on on top of like Screen Factory afraid to release this due to rights issues, we're going to release it. Plus, we're going to make a slipcover that says Jaws 5. Plus, we're going to put the logo. Like, it was almost like, yeah, it was almost like they were poking the bear big time, you know, with the release. So, I get it. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's tough because I don't know how all this kind of stuff works and how offended or how taken back, like, someone like Universal would be like, screw that. You're not doing that, you know? Yeah, to know. me, the. But someone made I, a good point. Someone said, uh, wait till James Cameron finds out they released <laughs> the Terminator. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. That's very possible. After this come out... Dude, like, these are the type of people that you do not want to fuck with. Like, in just the limited interaction that we had with producers and things like that, like, you do not want to do that. You do not want to mess with people in huge studios or people that have any kind of, like, power like that. Because if there's one thing that they have a lot of, it's lawyers. And they love to use them. So I just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, and you were talking about earlier that maybe, hey, Scream Factory was promised, uh, Drop Dead Fred, whatever. I don't believe that at all because you don't make an announcement, design cover art, spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on pressing discs and covers and all that without something signed pen to paper. Right. Right. True. I'm positive that they had the rights to release it and that Universal with the cruel jaws stuff took it. They're like they're pulling. But you it. don't think you don't think that uh that there's any heat anywhere, the fact that Screen Factory is supposed to release Cruel Jaws inside against it, they sniped it, released look, it. Out, look, it would it. I swear to God it wouldn't exactly. surprise me if Screen Factory was if just like Fuck him guys, we're going <laughs> Like, that's the thing. Like maybe all, after Scheme all that, like, oh, shit, yeah. they, just, they just made a bunch of money off this title that we didn't release. Like we're gonna, like we're gonna, one day we're gonna get ours. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I, I'm not saying that happened, but like I don't know what goes on behind the scenes at these companies and how competitive they are with each other. You know? Listen, we ain't got enough money from these stupid fucking fans yet. We're gonna take them for all they're worth. You get all that shit from Severin. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you think it's a little bit hey. odd that all this is happening is happening now? Maybe they're like, shit, these Halloween 4Ks ain't selling too good. Let's try to let's get. That's that's more. a good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, who can we sue or fuck with? <laughs> yeah. I'm so mad. These yeah, Halloween. Making our quota. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, put it past Scheme Factory. You know, maybe send an email out to some lawyers. And... But as far as okay, let's say allegedly, if the, all this did happen which I'm pretty sure it did. I can't, we might divulge who the informant is towards the end of the show. You got to stay tuned. Yeah. To the end of the video though. <laughs> We're going to tell you who it is. So what kind of legal repercussions ah, would come from doing this, from selling 
these Cruel Jaws novels and Blu-rays for over a year. Here, that, here's another thing, though, too. And people are on here commenting about, like, so this is just a movie made up of, like, other shark films and things like that. Anybody that's ever seen, like, cinema from Italy or India or places like that, they are notorious for doing shit like that. From taking, like, other films and just, like, yeah. splicing them into a film and calling it something else. And Bruno Mattei is, like, the number one, like, Hell of the Living Dead and all that stuff where he just use shit from dawn of the dead and music and like right. that yeah. happens constantly so this is not an unusual thing it's just unusual that right. somebody would hold like kind of get behind it in that way and not look at any of the repercussions of doing that like a major label yeah, yeah. but it's it's sold for a year how does that work do they I'm guessing they have to go back that entire run. And if Universal wants a percentage of it, they got a good claim to be getting it. Um, and how does that work? What kind of percentage is it? Um, they use the Jaws likeness, the fork or the, the slip cover. They actually falsely named it Jaws 5. Man, I... This is this sort of thing could this sort of thing could end Severn Films. I mean, I hate to say that. I do not want to see that happen. I like a lot of the stuff that they bring out, um, but it's very possible if Universal is that pissed off. I mean, they yanked uh, supposedly, allegedly, Drop Dead Fred from the catalog that was getting ready to come out. How and far that's, can that's, they go legally? That's fucking purely like speculation, though, right? Like we don't know that, yeah. But the one thing that I do know about this is, you like, there's just they got away with something a bunch of different times, and I'm pretty sure that it was either one of two things: either they were like ignorant to the fact of like that that could be a problem. Like, well, we got away with this many times, like maybe you know it's no big deal, or uh, they were. They knew and were just like, well, fuck it. Let's just see how much we can sell. I don't know which one it was. I don't care which one it was. Like I said, Seven Films is one of the best sites that is out there that sells boutique Blu-rays. It's right up there in the top four. So keep that in mind while we're saying all this shit. We, I like their site. I'm not disparaging their site. I think that maybe there was a lapse in judgment, perhaps, Maybe they should have thought through a couple of different things a little bit better. Uh, but, you know, we've done the same fucking thing in a different Garrett, way. Real quick, Garrett, um, I got a question for you. So, Are you ready to turn into Steve? Give it to it, fucker! Give it! 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 Oh, so. Anthony, <laughs> thank you, brother. Um, what are some examples of other films that you guys have in your collection that were pulled because of legal issues? Well, we um, just mentioned the Red Cross um, set from the Sleepaway Camp. Set. Red Cross set. I have Clown House. Um, I'm trying to think. I know I've got more. I just can't think off the top of my head what was pulled. Um. If anybody can give examples, I might I may own them. Um, yeah, but I'm I would a, love to get a Severin Drop Dead Fred in my in my collection. I would like that. I'm guessing. I'm sure somebody only, uh, from Severin will send us one after this fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just want oh. I just want my Drop Dead. I won't I won't tell anybody. I'll sneak it into my collection next to the the, uh, the sinful dwarf, and we'll be good to go. You know. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, Anthony, again, big thanks for the super chat, brother. We always appreciate you. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think of some other oh, examples. That's a good one. That's a good one. I have the I have the Swamp Thing rated R1. I have that one. Remember that? They had to take oh, away yeah. the Swamp Thing one because she was naked in it, and it was like oh, rated. Oh, fuck, like, yeah. It was like rated PG or something like that on there. I think the, the most infamous one's probably the... Uh, the sleepwood camp one though 
as far as people that, that, that are talking about it. now the the clown house one was that was out briefly yeah and it'll probably never ever come out again so that is that's probably the rarest of the i think that one goes for well over a hundred dollars itself and it's just a it's a little shitty mgm dvd mm. alternate ending to little shop of horrors that's right yeah mm. yeah i vaguely remember that one that's hard as hell to find that now it's worth a damn fortune <laughs> yeah i don't think that i have that but the um the blu-ray i think has that ending in there right you can have it has both cuts i believe does it? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. What I about? Think what, I think it's. I think it's a double. What Lepke about Lepke films, yep. though? Real quick on here, Lep, Lepke Vision Films. I agree. This could be very bad for them because I'm sure they are in, entitled to a payout and a payout that Severin can't afford. Well, that's the key. I mean, that's that's we like we say we know how this stuff works. They have to pay them a percentage. The question is, what's the percentage? Like. That's the, the uh, key probably factor. Probably everything huh? they're going to make off that new box set because it's expensive. <laughs> Maybe that's why they shoved it out. I was know? actually Minus thinking about now. that as well. Yeah. You know? um, the, because it, the, it's, it's it's pricey. It's almost it's like two hundred dollars. So you know maybe if they, I mean, you're going to think of how much money this could probably cost and how much they're going to make. I don't know, but I mean, who who's to say? It was just seemed very quick and it wasn't like something that was like talked about. It just kind of appeared, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that and they're and taking they, payments now, and they're not releasing it till set, like you're not going to get it till after like the first of the year. So like they're oh, you're, fuck, they're taking payments long? now. Yeah, because it's not released until after after Black Friday. Here's the thing, so too, they're though. They're ordering now. You're talking about percentages, Universal's percentage on, you know, the the cruel jaws. The ball is in Universal's court. They never signed. They didn't sign anything with Severin releasing that footage at all. So, if they really want to be dicks about it, Universal Pictures, they could ask for every dime that was taken in for Cruel Jaws. They're going if they're going to court. Most companies wouldn't be dicks. It would just be a cease and desist. Hey, drop this shit. Don't release. You know, we don't want to fool with lawyers or anything. Drop it. You're good. But they pulled the drop dead Fred allegedly. So that and and I've heard that this is still an ongoing issue. <laughs> so they're not Yeah. And I've heard through the grapevine, Universal Pictures is not a group that you want to fuck with at all. I would imagine none of those big studios are groups you want to fuck with. Like I would imagine they just love stuff like this. Like to because they're not because their mindset is, if they let one person get away with it, then anybody else will get away with it, and like they'll just cut that shit off, like right where it starts. So mm-hmm. they're gonna come down with the wrath of God on whoever does something like this, like any kind of copyright thing. I think the problem is it was a huge intellectual property franchise. The Jaws franchise is one of the biggest for you know Universal of all time. Mm-hmm. That's that's the thing, you know. Right. But somebody mentioned uh, another movie, too, called Evil Dead Trap, which I saw that, and I was like, what the fuck? These people can just, can they just take, like, movie titles that already exist and put them in shit? And, like, it's basically the same type of movie, and they get away with that? Evil Dead Trap. Is that a, isn't that a Japanese movie? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah... I mean that's that's what's up with Severin. Um, like I said, it's still an ongoing issue, allegedly. And I'm gonna keep saying allegedly because <laughs> it's not our fight. But a lot of people were wondering, and they weren't really told, aside from hey, due to a legal issue, Severin Films will not be releasing this. Um, and I would just love to know someday, maybe we will know if all these copies were finished. If they were in a warehouse and they just had to go in a big dumpster fire, um, hey, that sucks, man. Yeah, that would be really horrible if they had to like just destroy all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah, you know, that, if you were working for the company, you, you'd want to, you'd want to, uh, 
just keep one just you know just to have yeah for sure i mean possibly it maybe david gregory himself would be like okay i'm gonna take this little title here and put it in my bureau and it's just going to be mine Who's i love it no i don't think anybody aside from him would be keeping <laughs> Maybe not even him. No. I mean, it's it's like uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night for us. That situation with Silent Night, Deadly Night soured me on that movie forever. So possibly for him, he's looking up, you know, looking at the, the disc here, uh, Drop Dead Fred, and it makes him <laughs> sick to his stomach because who knows how much money Drop Dead Fred ends up costing Severn Films. I don't think. <laughs> is that Felcher? I'm just seeing Facebook user. Yeah, it's got it. Probably is. Oh, I don't yeah. know, David Gregory. I just know he's a British bloke, and that's my British voice. But Jesus Christ, I don't think it'll oh, bankrupt gee. them. I really don't think this will bankrupt them. Uh, I am like pretty much everybody else confused about that box set because, like, what the. What is that box set? Like, of all the shit they've ever put out, that was the one where I was the most confused. Oh, the new one, the Yeah. Fuck, I mean, it looks shoes. beautiful, but <laughs> honestly, like, I don't know anything about any of that. So, like, it's not something that's... It's not even close on my radar at all. You know, I know you guys mentioned there's that other release that's coming out that's actually worth worth checking out, which I'm pretty curious about for sure well, that that is actually in the box set though as well so they're doing individual but i saw it on their site that you can get it separately yeah they, they're doing individual yeah. release okay. of eyes of fire which was made from a uh kentuckian back in the day and is never really uh i think it was released one time on the vhs in the united states and that was back shortly after it came out in the early 80s so it's kind of forgotten movie, really. Um, and I do remember seeing it back in the day. It's, I mean, it's a slow burn movie, but um, it's definitely interesting for the time. I mean, it, I think it was made in 83. Um, and yeah, I actually I'm pulled down this for sure. from uh, my bureau. And I knew I had his autograph because I sent it to him back in the day. This is an ad slick from Vestron Video of Eyes of Fire. It's signed by the director. Who, I remember that actual cover. I didn't remember it until like seeing that. Yeah. yeah who lives in, uh, still lives in Paducah. Well, he did up until whenever I sent this. Paducah, Kentucky is where he's from. And that's where he lived at when I mailed him the autograph request. So, uh, but that's an inter interesting movie. Paducah is a hotbed for uh, fucking slasher films. Western Kentucky. Yeah. If um, nobody knows, yeah, Paducah is really in the middle of fucking nowhere. I mean, it's slightly above Prestonsburg, but not much. Yeah, I'm, but, down, I'm down for it. For sure. I don't own it. I've never heard of it. People are saying good things. It's from the 80s. I'm in. Prestonsburg. Well, Paducah <laughs> has a Walmart as well. Prestonsburg has a Walmart. Does Paducah have a Best Buy? I don't think so. They might have a Cracker Barrel. Fala says that uh, he didn't even want Cruel Jaws until he watched that video, and now he wants it. <laughs> yeah, it is actually that. Like It's one of those Troll 2 kind of movies. You need to get it. There's enough horrible well, shit in it to make it worth watching. But we didn't even tell anybody. Like, if no, if people in here haven't seen it at all, like, we haven't really gotten into the whole good stuff, is that there's, like, a Hulk Hogan impersonator in the movie. And, and we didn't really get into that. So if people haven't seen it, like, that's what even makes it even funnier. Yeah. I mean, that's why in the opening video we kind of spliced Cruel Jaws footage with classic Hulk Hogan footage. Um Anybody that's seen the movie probably would have got that. But, uh, yeah, it's a real-life uh, Hulk Hogan impersonator. He was actually on an episode of Monday Night Raw in, I think it was like 2006, 2007, with Randy Orton. Uh, if anybody wants to look that up, it's uh, 
the Raw episode titled Orton Knows Best. Um, and it's the same guy. It's the same guy. He looked almost exactly the same like 10, 12 years later. That's so funny, man. Yeah. So funny. Um, but yeah, we did do a review over Cruel Jaws on the Patreon, one of the Patreon review shows. And it wasn't that long ago, was it? It was just, what, a month no, or two it ago. it feels like it yeah. was, yeah, it feels really like it just happened. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, over the months ahead, how much this stuff's going to go for. Because odds are, um, after this, nobody's going to want to cut, uh, you know, Cruel Jaws a break and re-release it. I don't think anybody would have that kind of balls. Yeah, if you don't have it now, then chances are you're going to be paying a damn fortune for it on eBay. Like, because I don't think it'll ever come back out. I don't think any of that stuff, that any kind of like copyright issues will ever come back out after this. Mm-hmm. But, and, like, you know, some of that stuff, like, wasn't there a movie called Lady Terminator that came out like years ago? I mean, there's been yeah, other. I, ha- I have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting watch, man, I'll tell you. There's precedent for this kind of stuff, so maybe it will. Who knows? Yeah. No, it's definitely an interesting, you know, story that's still unfolding. It's just, you know, like we said, like, we hope for the best because, you know, we buy a lot of stuff from, from that company as well. And, you know, it just sucks that this had to happen. And I'm still super bummed that uh, that Drop Dead Fred ain't going to happen. I mean, hopefully someone else does it, you know, I, like I said, if – a big company does it and releases it. Like I have less excitement about it, but uh, let's kind of see what ends up happening to it. But I'm happy to have Overboard. I'm happy to have Evil Dead Five, Cruel Jaws. So you know, happy to have all that. Well, don't worry because Screen Factory is going to release it with a fucking 12 inch vinyl, five enamel pins, <laughs> a, a refrigerator magnet, a, a, a set of figure. fucking steak knives. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, they, the Eyes of the Fire, is, you can get that on a solo release if you don't want the box set, because I'm not buying that box. Yeah, yeah, they have the individual release, and to be honest with you, I mean, that box set, that's, and they do this a lot, Severin Films, I mean, just a freaking vast, like, 13-disc set, that's just too too much for me on, on stuff that I I mean, if you like that stuff, is. I'm sure you're probably you're probably excited, but it, that, that's just not kind of my, my thing. Nobody likes that shit. And it's the kind of shit where people would say they like it. If they're, if they're just pretentious fuck faces, they really don't even know anything about it. That's the only so thing. When that... they... So when they announced it today and people are writing like, oh my God, like that's not, that's just fake. That's bullshit. a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. So as it always is. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Das Hindenburg Slottis from Germany. That's a wonderful film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you all like, I'm sure you all love Fellini and all that shit, too. Well, go fuck yourself. Well, like, was, nobody likes that shit. That was like the the vinegar syndrome when we were doing, like, the Black Friday thing, and it pops up, we're all just like, huh? And then all of a sudden, there's, like, people online, like, doing backflips, like, Six Strike Samurai, <laughs> finally! And yeah. I'm looking, I'm like, dude, oh, am I that often? I've never even heard it. I've never even heard of this movie. It's on 4K. When I was a little <laughs> kid, when I was a little kid, I watched <laughs> Andy Lee's Meat Pies every night. Oh, fuck <laughs> That's what we talk about, though. So like, like when we were uh, interviewing uh, the guys from uh, Scream Factory and Vinegar Syndrome, uh, Brad Anderson, Brad Henderson, sorry, who the hell's Brad? An- that's a <laughs> he's dream. a fucking wrestler, isn't he? <laughs> well, that's Brad Armstrong. That's Brad Armstrong. Right. Brad now, Armstrong. Brad Anderson did session nine. Brad Anderson, Brad Henderson, yeah. brother. So, like, I was trying to get a little info. I was like, hey, you know. And never in a fucking million years would I have said, are you guys going to release Andy Lee's meat pies? <laughs> everybody's, everybody's wanting to see that one. And he was like, so fucking serious about like what he was going to release next to. He's like, oh, we can't tell you because a lot of people really look forward to our shit. It's Andy Lee's meat pies. Fuck. <laughs> Not to say. Like, a part of me feels like maybe maybe I we don't know as much as we do because I'm like, I've got like 5,000 DVDs in there and it's like a lot of these movies I don't have at all. And it's just funny. I'm like, how have I never even heard of this? Thing? You know? I mean, so, that, that is one thing that does kill me though about people now, especially like horror fans now, like the, the modern horror fans is they act like they've seen every fucking thing that there is to see. 
And like all this shit that comes out that's like super obscure is the best shit ever made. Some of it's just shitty. It really is. Like some of the stuff is just really, yeah. really bad. I mean, it's all right to say that. Like, we've been collecting and in this game for like 20 years and you've got kids that are like 25 years old. Be like, yes. And I'm like, how the hell did this, did they find this movie? Like, you know, it's hard enough to find VHS tapes. Right, nowadays. Because That's more or less where, where it would have been, you know? Most of this stuff has not been released on anything since VHS, if that. Like, when they released Gates of Hell Part 2 under, what was it, Through the Fire or something like that? Yeah. Dude, there's movies that probably do deserve championing a little bit that are unknown, but it is not that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and it's hard as shit to find VHS tapes nowadays, too, to, like, find this kind of stuff. Like, back when we were doing, like, VHS tapes you could get for a dollar, like, anywhere you went that were, like, people were, like, trying to get rid of them, you know? And you can kind of find some hidden gems in there. For sure. I mean, there's some stuff that Seven and Vinegar Syndrome has released that I thought was, I never heard of them and thought it was great. Like, you take Seven right, releasing, yep. like, Night Killer, which is fucking hilariously great. You got Vinegar Syndrome with like Berserker and The Uninvited and like, I mean, I could name three or four more like that were, um, what's the one, Blood Games, like other stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of that's... That is the one thing, okay. I was saying a lot of that's subjective. I mean, people like anything out there. Um, But I do think that it's cool that both, you know, Severin and Vinegar Syndrome are taking the time to actually... A lot of this stuff before Trauma released it or Full Moon or right. whatever, and it looked like dog right. shit. At least now they're <laughs> they're remastering it. It actually, I mean, if you want the fear, it's going to look fucking amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. From the, it may not be very good, or maybe you'll like it. I don't know, but it's going to look. But that's great. another good thing is that they have they actually have released stuff that I've never heard of before and. It got me on the fact of how good the artwork is, and, and I can trust that the quality is going to be good. And I ended up buying something on a blind buy and, and absolutely loving it. So I like that Severin and Vinegar Syndrome are doing stuff like that because it is opening to my eyes to things I've never seen before. And at this stage of the game, to find something you've never seen that's actually something you'd want to rewatch is very, you know, few and far between. So to kind of get that because they're doing these kind of uh, restorations to these films that not many people know is mm-hmm. is what I kind of like the most about it. Like, how many times can we buy Halloween? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's, that's what I would. Like, it's, you it's know, nice to get something different. Well, th- that's the best part about Vinegar Syndrome to me is the fact that they don't seem to give a shit like about whether or not people have heard of the films or not, or if they're popular or anything like that. Like they put out whatever they want to put out, whatever they seem to like like or think that other people will like and it's a lot of times stuff that i've never even heard of which you would think would be impossible considering how long we've been like doing this shit but like if they can do that and present it in a way where it looks like something that was made today and you know you've got all kinds of special features on it and it's just a fun movie so they know about stuff that you know we don't even know about that's like cult classic kind of stuff i mean that's why i love these companies and severin's the same way and there's a lot of companies that are the same way so even though they fucked up on this or whatever, or whatever happened with it, allegedly fucked up, um, that doesn't change the fact that they're still like one of the top three or four companies out yeah. there for, for this kind of thing too. And no, I didn't buy the Andy no, Milligan set, but God damn, I wish I would have bought that fucking set. Cause it's like $500 now. Is it really? Yes. Okay. I didn't go know try to buy so it on that. eBay. Oh wait, not that. No, not that. Not the Andy Milligan one. I'm thinking of the Al Adamson one. I get those two confused. Um, but yeah, the new set that we talked about briefly, uh, we'll mention it on here because this they maybe are releasing this pre-order early to help pay legal fees. Allegedly, they may be doing that. But this is a big uh, what 15 disc set. All the haunts be ours. A compendium of folk horror. Uh, so they made that announcement today. It's 20 feature films, hours and hours of short films, commentary, featurette, new documentary on the uh, uh, folk horror movies, which I didn't even know was a subgenre of horror movies, to be honest with you. 
Uh, it's called Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched. So it's a very cool looking set. Um, the only movie that I know about from the set is Eyes of Fire, which I think it may be the only uh, you know film from the United States that's in the whole set. I think there's some from England, Canada, Norway, um, a bunch of other countries. I can't remember, but uh, that's a massive set. Severn's known for doing that. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful set. I mean, it does look really cool, but it's, that's yeah. out of my price range, Severn. Pull up Sean's comment. <laughs> Sean Patrick, now he claims that he owns the rights to drop dead Fred and is burning the negative at Tony Moran's Labor Day barbecue. Yeah. Is that going to be at the homeless shelter? <laughs> God damn it. What about Umbrella Video, Dr. Shankster? What do you want to say about Umbrella Video, brother? Is that your company, man? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that is it, though, as far as the uh, what's going on with Severin Films, unless you guys have anything else you want to add on it. Uh, again, I hope that Severin doesn't lose their ass doesn't get sued. Um, I hope they can work something out if something needs to be worked out. Um, we did not, had it been Screen Factory that did this, I would have been roasting them the entire fucking show because I, be, hate, I hate Screen great. Factory. Yeah. I hate Screen Factory and I hate the guys that run it mainly. I mean, the, you know, they do have some God damn, things. son, you're coming in hot, aren't you? <laughs> I hate yeah. you and everybody you fucking know. <laughs> I'd Hate shit on your porches words. if I could. <laughs> <They're>, um, <laughs> I want to go and try to buy something from Screen Factory. It's gonna be like, no, fuck you, no. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what Severin should do to uh, to to get the money back is they should call everybody that bought Cruel Jaws and said, "I need it back." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they would have to refund hey. the money. <laughs> Hey man, <laughs> you think you could send send that like uh, shocking dark back? Please. <laughs> I just saw Ooh. you didn't open that Evil Dead yet. Bring it back. <laughs> um, Wait, Magic Kill says there is a trailer for the box set, so I'll have to check that out. I haven't, uh, I haven't yet. So, um, shit in the box. The shit in the box T-shirt is coming <laughs> soon. Believe it or not. I should have worn it tonight. It'd have been amazing. Oh God. That's yeah, going to be a big sailor. Uh, um, but yeah, the um, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything, we'll we'll go through them here. But um, again, now nothing but the best for our buddies at Severin Films. I hope they consider us buddies still. Um, I know, you know, they. I, I ain't gonna say nothing else. But. Um, I yeah. mean, what the fuck? We didn't do anything. We just reported about what the fuck was going on. It ain't like we were like, you're fucking oh. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do anything like that. I'm just saying we didn't do that. That's true. We just reported about what was going on. Right. Now, and we're, we're investigative uh, horror reporters, maybe. So, um... Yeah, Suspiria Night, I would definitely consider The Witch a uh, modern-day folk horror movie. I just, I'd never heard of that subgenre of horror before, um, this box set. But The Witch is awesome. I I love that movie. It's very, very well made, and considering it's such a low-budget film, it really didn't look like it. Um, But yeah, that definitely is a modern-day folk movie. You need to see the lighthouse too, then, because yeah. I know you haven't seen that one yet, and it's fucking as crazy as that is. Wes, yeah. if you like the the witch, if you like that kind of folk horror, like the witch, then you're gonna love the village, um, that folk movie. Yeah. No, I've seen that. <laughs> yeah, we saw that movie Damn in the off. theater. <laughs> Me and Uncle Bill saw oh, that movie in the, in the theater back in the day, and I was so fucking mad whenever that you know the. The big I, was, I agree. I saw it in the theater yeah. too, and I can remember when all of a sudden it like started unraveling, and I'm like, "What the hell is this?" I was so mad. Yeah. 
I'm not going to say it. Some people might not have seen the film. You might want to really get surprised by the ending. Which is <laughs> Foz Rotten is asking, when are we getting to see the new shirts? T-shirt Joe's about to get some business from me. Go ahead and buy, buy your stuff from T-shirt Joe. He's going to keep the classic shirts and stuff like that. But uh, these shirts are, are not from T-shirt Joe. No offense, T-shirt Joe, but, uh, you know. It'll be uh, probably within the next week or so I might put the website up. Uh, Sean Patrick, I hope Severin Films will not lose a bunch of money, etc. I hope it works out. At worst, donate a portion of the shit in the box shirts to help cover legal fees. <laughs> well, I don't think that, yeah, the proceeds would help that much <laughs> from the shit in the box shirt. Um, <laughs> it is a cool looking shirt, but you know. The Village coming out from Severin, The Witch 2. Slip cover. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this shit. Cosmo Bubba, I remember seeing the village in the theater and called the ending thirty minutes into it. I was so mad when I ended up being right. Yeah. How did how does him not I'm surprised Shyamalan... because I didn't I don't know, did anybody see that new movie? Because I didn't see it. Yeah old or whatever no that's that's what i was gonna ask i'm like how does he keep, still get to keep making movies every now and then he i mean he has a good one though and then he makes like five horrible ones and gets back around i don't know i guess that's you know why about, i'm probably in the minority but i loved signs when i saw it yeah i mean i, yeah, I didn't mind that didn't mind that one at all. I fucking like The Visit, and a lot of people hate that movie. You know, I have it, and I watched it once, but I, I vaguely remember. I just remember, like, that one creepy scene where they were, like, they were underneath, like, the porch or whatever, like, chasing the kids. I thought that was pretty creepy. Um, who's ready to see <laughs> Tony Todd fucking slice up some bitches this weekend, boss? <laughs> I don't know who this is, but whoever it is is fucking great. Like... Yeah, I think I've got this one is, on the I, Facebook group. I can look. Let me see here. I think I think Slippy was the one before because after you said I, you think it was him, he wrote, you suck. So I'm assuming that was his cover was blown. Probably was. I don't know if this is I don't know if this is still him, but So if you want to watch Cruel Jaws though, someone uploaded the HD version of it on YouTube, which I mean fuck. That's the least of anybody's worries right now. Copyright issues on YouTube, just go ahead and watch it. <laughs> That one was Chris Prater, <laughs> who uh, was, ah. you know, the the Tony Todd uh, coming back, for some reason, that totally makes me want to see the, the Candyman movie now, just for the fact that he's in it, that they gave him a little bit of a nod. Oh, fuck, I get it. Yeah, I mean, I, what? I, get it. I don't have it. I don't have I get it. it. Fuck you. Fuck you. I got something you don't have. Oh, Look at that. Shit. Look at it. That. You want it. You can't it. have it. Get it. I'm ordering it right now. That's it. You got me. I'm ordering it right now. Get it, you son of a bitch. Tony Todd. Here, here's, a, here's a spoiler alert, too. Our buddy Tony Todd is going to be on the second Cameo uh, video. We'll do. Ooh. You haven't I watched that this? last night, man. I was I was laughing. <laughs> if you haven't seen I can't believe, like... The the Savini one, like, dude, he was more interested in that than when I met him in person. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. When I met him in person, I was like, hey, man, how y'all are you? He goes, I'm tired. <laughs> That's what his response to me was. It was like, <laughs> my tired. first horror convention. <laughs> when we met him. him want to go up there and go to bed. When we met him, I asked him, I asked him something, and he was like, um, I asked him what it was like to be, like, do something. He was like, oh, it's the most fun I've ever had uh, standing up. And then I asked him something else, and he said the same fucking thing. He's like, yeah, that's the most fun I ever had standing up. He was like, he couldn't give less of a shit. But if you give him $100, apparently, he's real jovial, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, he could go buy him a, a, a meat tray with some cheese on it and enjoy. I actually was getting a little nervous when he was inside that, like, garage slash, like, shed. I'm like, dude, like, that looks like a lot of that shit can get ruined pretty easy in there. Like, it didn't look so, so like a secure place to have all of his masks and stuff, like, and props in that, like, old 
dilapidated shed and out in the middle of his yard. It's unfortunately, crazy. I, I, like, shocked that that's where he keeps his stuff. I think that's where he kept his uh, safe, unfortunately, yeah. too, for him. Yeah. I'm like, why is his stuff in there? Like, that looks like something he can go in his backyard and just, like, knock it down and take his shit. Like, I don't know. I just thought it was very odd. But uh, yeah, for the for the people that haven't watched the cameo video, which is just us reacting to these cameo like horror uh, star cameos, you should definitely watch that because there's one with Andrew Bernarski. It's one of the funniest fucking things. Oh my god! You will ever see? Uh, well, the one in the car, and then the one he gives out his phone number without. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, don't if you want to hit me up, don't give this number out, but it's like 0843 <laughs> yeah. What's funny is, like, I used to make fun of Andrew Bernarski, but, like, really, my um, impression was pretty spot on. He's he's about that stupid, it seems like to me. Something's happened to him, man, because he looks yeah. like 10 miles of bad fucking road here lately. <laughs> Jostradamus, though. Well, it's funny uh, because... Okay. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Well, no, it was funny because the two videos, I was like, wait, that's the same guy? Like, he, it just looked like it's crazy on how different he looked from those two videos. And Cameo has not been around that long. So, like, how long of his time frame was that? Well, I think he used some just for men in one of the videos. So his beard was like... <laughs> <laughs> Black, <laughs> whatever, yeah. Yeah, he spray painted it with some brown spray paint. Uh, I'm gonna go to the liquor store. Just got paid. What's funny is too is he charges three hundred fucking dollars. That's crazy, crazy. Yeah. That's just insane. But I mean, I, what has he ever done where you would pay him three hundred dollars for a cameo? I have no idea. Um, Jester Domaso says if anybody wants to just watch Cruel Jaws, somebody did upload it in HD on YouTube. So. Watch it while you can. It's probably not going to be up there very much longer, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. Um, yeah, Anthony, I appreciate you. And I, we've got more. Um, the 1982 slasher uh, trailers is up. I put it up on Patreon today, so you can check that out. Um Is Tony Todd playing Fat Candyman? Respect to Tony Todd. <laughs> what? Now, Tony what Todd looks dude? about the same. He's not. That dude is is six, he's six five six six. I remember going up to him and I was like, Jesus Christ, he could fucking like yeah. put me put me in his ass if he wanted. To. <laughs> yeah, we like, guys huge. We haven't uh, talked about um. Tony Todd, but yeah, we both met him at one of those horror hound shows years ago. I thought he was a great fucking guy, man. I thought he was cool. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah, he bullshitted with us. His voice is like, he's one of the deepest voices I've ever heard live in person. You know, so. I remember he asked you if you were like a radio DJ or something like that, if you'd been in radio. Yeah, and I remember I gave him one of our dead pit cars. I'm like, yeah, well, buddy, it's internet radio. <laughs> yes, give yes, me, I give am. A, give me a call, Tony. Um, but yeah, he's on Cameo, and his voice on there is fucking great, because you know how deep it is. He's like, hey, Kathy, I'd like to wish you happy birthday. I can't even do that. Sounds like Macho Man, almost. <laughs> I'd like to wish you a happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be the best cameo? They could, he could have like a thousand dollars for his fucking cameo if he was still around. Oh yeah, easy. God. Um, but yeah. So let's see here. That's a good point. You guys, they haven't, should... you guys haven't promoted what fifty? I'd I'd be down for that. What is it? Someone said you could. They, Severance should do a fifty percent off sale on their site to recoup some of that money for. Drop that, Fred. They could. I mean, I like I said, it's sad, and I don't know how much they lost from doing that or how much they're going to lose possibly from whatever's going to happen regarding the Jaws thing. Um, but, yeah, they may have to do something like that. I don't know. Oh, fuck. The new match is the... scared. <laughs> wow. Oh, really? God. Yeah, I, I've yeah, heard I didn't, that I didn't know that either. The new Masters of the Universe is not the best, so I haven't watched it. I watched it. Um, 
<laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> Michael, Michael Birmingham says if uh, Andrew Bernarski charges $300, he better give out his phone number, social security number, and cholesterol level. <laughs> But yeah, Master of uh, the Universe is um, the the animation is killer, but the story is not that great. There's a huge great. controversy about that, like with Kevin Smith and all yeah. the shit that's going on, where he turned it into some sort of like woke fest, and it ended is, up, for sure, yeah. For sure. But yeah. so, um, guys, you I guys guess... haven't hyped your convention thing. Oh yeah, um, when when is that? It is the first weekend in October. I think it's the first through the third. Um, but we're only going to be there one day. It's going to be a limited appearance in there, right, Uncle Bill? Yeah, we want to keep people waiting for more, so we're only going to be there one fucking day. Yeah, and as of right now, we're not planning on, unless somebody messages us and say, hey, do you have a dead pit shirt and 2XL or whatever, we're not having a table or anything. Um so all we're doing is a live commentary for Don't Panic on Saturday night at 10 p.m. Which you've, if you've ever been to one of the live commentaries though before that we've done, it's always a great time and hilarious shit always happens. So. And I may get with uh, my brother-in-law to see if he can't help me figure out how to. We might be able to go live from do a live commentary over the internet as well. So you know, there's a lot of people yeah, that's nowhere killer. near. Nowhere near Louisville, uh, Kentucky, so you guys could check it out too. Mm. So. It's a good movie to do it to as well, but a lot of people are really into that right now. Yeah, I think it's just a good one with a crowd anyway. I mean, fuck, it doesn't make yeah. the most sense ever, but it's goofy and you know, fun. Oh, yeah, and it's got, it's got a lot of steam right now behind it as far as like, you know, that status of like a Troll 2 or something where people are going to watch and like have a great time with it. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, that's I guess that's October the second Saturday. <laughs> what is it? I can't. You can't put it up there, but it's fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Uh, do you got? You got to love these people. <laughs> oh, God. Woo. Rolling Woo 666, we do not know uh. who's putting out Drop Dead Fred for sure. If I was a betting man, uh. like I said, it, I would say Vinegar Syndrome. So, yeah. I'm changing my I'm changing my thing to Shell Factory. I'm changing my, my uh, <laughs> yeah. pick. Your answer. That's, that's yeah, a so good those, answer. Those assholes Fuck can you. take more of our money. <clears throat> but... Yeah. Um, Guys, give me 20. Give me 20, motherfucker. <laughs> um, it's been a real fun show. And I ho- again, Severin Films, I wish you the best. Hope hope you guys pull out of this. And, um, you know, how, whatever happens, it doesn't cost you guys a fucking fortune. Godspeed well, to you. Yeah. Best. Best wishes. Put out some cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. S- stay safe on those savage streets, Saber and Films. <laughs> That's right. Uh, um, I would I would do a Drop Dead Fred uh, live commentary. Sure. I don't even remember that movie at all at this point. I don't, I know I don't I've either. seen it, but um, we do have a um, big boy <laughs> Momo. <laughs> I'm just calling him Big Big Boy Momo. You know. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like 13, 14 years ago, we probably could have Ooh. easily gotten away with saying that, but I'm not going to now, man. I'm from Eastern Kentucky. I've already got oh. enough shit against me. <laughs> uh, yeah. We got we got two strikes on us as it is just fucking being yeah. here. Fuck you. I can't even wear. I like wearing these hats now. I can't even wear a Cleveland Indians hat now. It's the they're the fucking guardians, cause everybody's offended. Wait, they changed their name. They changed yeah. their name. Yeah, the Cleveland Guardians. Yeah, I didn't know that. I had no idea. Damn. So anyway, 
Um, appreciate everybody joining us on here. Um, for those uh, that are checking us out on Born to Be Rad channel, we're simulcast tonight. You can check us out at youtube.com backslash dead pit. Or if you're checking us out on dead pit, you can check out Born to Be Rad somewhere. There he is. Uh, youtube.com backslash born the number two B E rad. Yeah. Were we going to, um, uh, unveil who the, you know, our source was for the, Oh yeah. Thing? Yeah. We almost oh. forgot. We got to Yeah. Where's he at there, Garrett? Have you got him out? <laughs> who? <laughs> I caged him up. Yeah, he's going to jail for saying this, but it's our 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 source, our informant, is our good buddy Blobkin. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Blobkin. Blobkin. Blobkin could not keep his fucking mouth shut. I'm sorry, Severin Films, David Gregory, and all you blokes. Um, but yeah, Blobkin just he told me sorry. I know it was. <laughs> I know you guys have confided in each other, and Blobkin was in that meeting, and he promised not to say a damn thing. But you know how fucking Blobkin is, though. Yeah, piece of shit. So, um, but yeah, we appreciate we had quite a crowd in here tonight. Appreciate you guys um, checking the show out, and we will be back. I think we're doing a we're definitely doing another commentary for Blair Witch Two: Book of Shadows. That'll be interesting Ooh. if I can find my damn DVD. Everybody talking uh, about how much that movie sucks ass and all this and that, that it's as bad as Texas Chainsaw of the Next Generation, but I don't think it's, so. It's not. Like, I promise it's not. I've seen that movie a couple of different times, and I remember it's not as bad as people made it out to be. Yeah, I mean, uh, what was her name? Erica Learson? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. And then the, the goth chick, what was her name? <laughs> Scott Steiner's in here, boys. <laughs> He's made his first appearance, I think. When are we going to review uh, going Grandma's review. Boy? I don't know. I love Grandma's Boy. I haven't seen that in forever. I've, I don't <laughs> know if I've ever seen it. Blobkin and there's no shutting him up. Yeah. Blobkin was a little bit lit. He drunk a few Mike's Hard Lemonades. But, uh, yep. Yeah. I mean, he's the source. Anybody, if, if David or any of his cronies are watching, uh, that's the guy that gave it up. You need to throw him in the fucking river. If you can get him, so he's he's already he's already in jail. Yeah, we got him locked up. I'm to, I totally need to order that thing. By the way, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Whatever happened to Ballabog? You remember Ballabog, don't you? Well, our uh, our good buddy, you know what his name is, but I ain't gonna say it because I'm from <laughs> Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> I can't say that now. People will be uh, offended because it rhymes with another word. Ballabog. So, anyway, guys, we appreciate every one of you guys checking us out. Check uh, the Dead Pit on Patreon side out. And, of course, deadpit.com. Oh, my. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.